Bonjour, êtes-vous prête pour un beau de cœur? Hey sis, welcome back to my channel. I'm very attracted to the idea of being a one-trick pony, so I'm going to do a get ready with me. We can call it a phone tutorial. We can call it a little whatever you need it to be. I just want to put on makeup. My past several get ready with me's I've used as these weird soap box adjacent opportunities to just talk about something that's been weighing on my mental. By the way, I'm gonna use the Ulta Matte Eye Primer. This actually is my favorite eye primer. I am a very, you know, I'm a staunch Knights Templar when it comes to to eye primer and I use it in almost all of my like look looks in my like everyday makeup it's not wildly necessary but when I'm like gonna put effort into something I will pop on a primer but like dating is just incomprehensible you know what I mean <laughs> why don't we talk about that I don't have a ton of adult experience dating because honestly it scares me for a very long time I was like oh I'm not a catch I'm ugly I like my body looks bad nobody wants to date me nobody wants to like know me, you know? And now I'm like, okay, I can see myself. I can see myself, I can see my body. I know what I look like. That's not the problem at play here. I'm going to lay down a little bit of bronzer on my eye, actually. It's from ColourPop. It's the shade um, Rodeo Drive, and it's actually a really easy transition for a neutral look. But I'm going semi-neutral today. I'm gonna wear some eyeliner, which means that's we're gonna have some filming difficulties later. I think what scares me about dating is that people are scary. I mean, as a woman in the world who listens to a lot of true crime podcasts, I'm aware of the way that dating someone, especially dating someone from the internet, can go way left way fast. Actually, not even from the internet, honestly. God, people can just do horrifying things to other people. Yo, I just rewatched Dear Zachary the other day. Why did I go into that? Oh my God, no. If you've never watched Dear Zachary, you probably don't want to, but do it, please do it. Oh my good lord, please watch it. People can be very scary. And like, it's just, it's not even just like a fear of dying and being murdered and becoming dead. I'm also just afraid of like the waste of time of like trying to make things work with someone and then it not working. And then, you know, you've invested things, you've had thoughts, you've had fantasies, you've like made imaginary plans with this person for the future that now you just sort of have to push into a box and let go. I don't want to put time into something that's not going to go anywhere. And it's just such an undertaking. It's so scary. <laughs> Last summer, no, two summers ago, summer 2018, I, as a 24 year old, a then 24 year old, went on what was my very first date. I am probably one of the most classic cases of a late bloomer adult imaginable. Fellow late bloomer adults, sound off in the comment section. Isn't it fun to be sad? Dating in high school didn't really happen for me because I was really tall and that was intimidating to boys. <laughs> and I also didn't know I was interested in women until I was like halfway through college. And by that point in time, everybody was kind of already wifed up or they were involved in some sort of very complicated polycule or they were engaged or, you know, cause that's just kind of how Sarah Lawrence operates. I've never really been in a circumstance where I'm like surrounded by people that are like readily available to date and who are attracted to me and whatnot. I'm kind of still not in that situation, even though I'm almost 26 and can just kind of go put myself in whatever situation I want to be in, because that's how adulthood works. It's not like there's a Rolodex of el Ow. There's not like a Rolodex of eligible potential partners around me. I have to really seek people out, which is super daunting because there's the time commitment of it. There's actually doing it. There's picking out outfits. There's running the risk you're gonna get murdered. There's picking a place to go. There's all this stuff. There's actually talking to the person once you're there. So like cycling back. When I was actually on that first date two summers ago and all the other dates I had with this person, dude, I've never been more anxious in my life. Not for the date while on the date. Like I was at the point where I couldn't eat. Like I would take like one bite while he was talking and then just like guzzle half of my water just so I'd have an excuse to get up and go to the bathroom so I could like leave the situation and like compose myself in the bathroom. And then of course, the minute I left the bathroom, I would be just as anxious sitting back down. So didn't really do anything. I'm taking a flat packing brush. I use the same two brushes in every single goddamn video. <laughs> when you have weird health stuff like I do, I went into detail with this in my last video. So I'm grazing over the whole thing. Like I'm a cow in a damn field, but like, oh, wait, it's not graze over, it's glaze over, right? When you go over something quickly. Am I stupid? Wait a second. Hi, okay, Samantha Ravendahl. I'm opening a new tab. Sorry, sis. Um, glaze over. Hold on. I think I'm an idiot. Oh my God. It's gloss over. How do you forget that? <laughs> 
explaining medical things that could impact like activities you have to just say so you have to put so much of yourself on the table immediately and it's like i don't like people to know that i'm human and have weaknesses i'm gonna go into another shade from ColourPop. oh my gosh not spawn <laughs> they don't know who i am <laughs> this is called softcore it is a pressed shadow it is a light pink and i'm gonna just put that on my mobile lid the song from the musical waitress when he sees me is basically my attitude towards dating summed up in totality if you've never heard of waitress it's a masterpiece um sarah Bareilles did the music for it sarah Bareilles is the person who i blame with me being the hopeless romantic that i am uh because i listened to her music way too much when i was in middle school so she did this to me and i will be pressing charges but like i do unfortunately love the idea of romance but i'm also a jealous harpy monster so even though I love romance and love and whatnot, I hate rom-coms because I'm watching someone else experience romance and not me and that's illegal. There's always envy somewhere in me processing things. Like she's just posted up in my brain at all times. It's like right next to the office of the makeup goblin in my brain is the envy goblin who's just like, is something good happening for somebody else? That's disgusting. Cut that out immediately. That's terrible. I'm not a great person. My first crush was on a boy in my first grade class. I walked in on the first day of first grade, I was transferring schools and I saw him and he had blonde hair and green eyes and I was like, okay, I get it. This is a punishment sent from God to torment me. I was in love with this kid who for conversation's sake we'll call Jonathan. For the entire, like from first grade until like eighth grade, the whole way through, I was like in a constant state of if this kid just abruptly proposes marriage to me at recess, I will say yes in a heartbeat. But oh my God, we sat next to each other in fifth grade and that was the best year of my life. <laughs> you know, of my childhood, <laughs> you know, better things have happened to me since then. But, oh my gosh, there was this one day in after school where we were doing our homework next to each other, obviously, because we sat next to each other. And he was reading a book about astronomy and I was doing like math homework. So, you know, I was in a state of inner turmoil and he nudges me in the abdomen and he's like, mm. hey, he's like, look at this, points down at the page and it's the word sexton, like one of these, a sexton. And he was like, it's and I'm just like, oh. and we're just like 11, losing our minds over the word sex being in this book. And in my mind, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm talking about S-E-X, because I couldn't say it. With Jonathan, the love of my life, this is the most erotic moment of my young life. <laughs> That was like a really incredible moment. And then he was like my most prolific crush for a very, very long time. And I'm gonna do some things with brown eyeshadow. The one I'm going to use is also from ColourPop. This is the shade Feathered. Hello, she's brown. She's been scratched up because I've used her in some Frank and makeup crafts, but she still does the job. Other crushes from my history and my time. I didn't have any crushes during my freshman year of high school because I was too worried about getting to gym class on time and finding where the cafeteria was. I was such a freshman stereotype. It was actually hilarious. Like I was so clueless and so scared all the time. My friends were like, you know, like no one actually cares. I'm like, no, everyone cares. They're all thinking things about me right now. I didn't realize I was like the most forgettable person at my high school. It's actually astounding how forgettable I was, but, you know. We all have our achievements. Sophomore year of high school is when the crush bomb really dropped because that is when I met I don't know, Derek. Derek was the love of my life. I was obsessed with this kid. He was tall, he played soccer, he was smart. Oh, I was obsessed with him and he fucking hated me. <laughs> God, we sat next to each other in chemistry, which was the worst class of my entire high school career. It's the only class I've ever gotten a D in and I'm still not over that. We sat next to each other for two terms in chemistry. I wanted to make a grand overture of romance and seduce this kid so much, but I didn't know how to. And then genius struck. I went to a very, very elitist high school. Grades were very important at my high school and everyone took them very seriously. So when report cards came out, 
everyone got really excited because we got to see all of our hard work pay off in the form of A's and B's. I was not expecting this obviously because math and science exist. So mine were more like A's, B's and C's. And in this one case in chemistry, a D. So I'm like, oh, I know. I know the perfect idea. I'm gonna say something about his report card and stroke his ego a little bit. So we're just sitting next to each other in chemistry class and he has his report card open on the table. This is what I looked like when I was a sophomore in high school. So this is who you should picture doing these things. This was me at like 15 or 16. I like lean over to like his area a little bit on the table. I had just applied my signature scent, which was Bath and Body Works Vanilla Bean Noel body spray. And I lean over and I was like, wow, Derek, all A's, you must be like, a genius or something. And he, without looking at me, goes, you say that like you're surprised. I mean, this kid is like 6'3", and when you're 6'3", you can kind of just do whatever you want. The only reason I still follow rules is because I'm only like six feet tall. Like that's why I still abide by laws. I don't think I even said anything. I think I just sat back in my chair and was like, I damn, uh, so the lethal dose of acetaminophen, like I just got back to work. I was just like, all right, two years later, senior year, it's like April or something. And so I'm like coming out of our school's library, having just done some homework for whatever, a class, I'm in high school. And I almost said his actual name, Derek is standing in the foyer with a bunch of his other cool type A athlete friends. And there was a girl walking ahead of me who I think was also part of his group. And so he said like, by Ashley to the girl as she was like walking away. And then when I passed him, he said, and I quote, by Nisa. And I was just like, <laughs> and I like squeaked out. I was like, oh, bye Derek. And I went upstairs to my locker and literally collapsed against it. Like I was just like <sighs> holding my art history textbook just for like the, the weight and comfort of it. Just like, oh my God. <laughs> Dude, this kid could have like stepped on me and I would be like, thank you. Like I, ooh girl, like way too into this kid. It was bad. And I thought that was the worst my crushes would ever get. And then junior year came. I'll call him Julius. Julius sat next to me in English class junior year. I knew of him because we had mutual friends. We'd like hung out at like the same gatherings before. He was this like tall, funny guy. He had a really strong brow. And I'd recently come to understand that eyebrows are an erogenous zone for me. So when you have like a strong brow, I'm just like very attracted to you. This was like my first crush that I actually thought I had a chance with, which is why like it got so bad. And we would like quip and joke all the time. We had a very strict dress code at my high school. And so I was wearing a pair of like high-waisted pink paper bag waist shorts from H&M. They were my crowning achievement. And I sauntered into English class wearing them. And he was like, uh, Nisa, I don't think those shorts pass dress code. And I was like, why are you looking at my legs, Julius? And he was like, uh, I'm not. Like got all red, I was just like, I am an emotional dominatrix. I was like, okay, this is happening. Like we have a solid flirtation ship with each other. We chat every day in class. There was this Facebook group that got created for every girl in the grade to post their prom dresses for junior prom. I was scrolling through. There was this post from a girl that I knew because like we had mutual friends. She was very quiet. I don't know. For the sake of the story, we'll call her Vanessa. And she had like this maroon like floor length gown. And I looked at the comments and I saw one that was like, this is so pretty, Vanessa. Julius is gonna look so nice in a tie this color. He's what? He's taking her to prom? I actually burst into tears. My friend Naomi was over and she was like, I mean, does he even know that you like him? And I was like, I wore shorts three days in a row this week. He'd have to be an idiot not to know that I liked him because that is how girls shoot their shot. They're just like, I had a thought about you. You didn't know that I'm in love with you. So he went to prom with her, but at prom, I'm wearing an adorable dress. I'm sitting at a table with my date, which was my friend Ava. Julius comes in with Vanessa. I'm an adult. I don't actually harbor any negative feelings towards anybody in these stories. I'm using, you know, historical present, like whatever. And they sit down and then he like, comes back to like around the back of our table. He like puts his hand on my shoulder and as he walks past, just like grazes it across the top of my shoulders, comes around to the front of our table and says to me, hey, you look great. 
Hello? Like, I looked at Ava and I was like, bitch, did that really happen? And she was like, yes, you dumbass. <laughs> he ended up like kind of ditching Vanessa in like kind of a rude way a couple weeks later to date this other girl. Wouldn't it be cool if I was like, and the other girl was me and we're engaged now. That would be kind of a sick ending. <laughs> so it took me until I was 24, like I said at the beginning of this video, to actually give dating the old college try. And oh my God, it was so stressful and I don't want to ever do it again. I was using Tinder. I don't like dating sites, dude. I think I just need to like meet a mutual friend or like, something like that because like I can't do these app things. First of all, if I turn off push notifications, I wind up ghosting everyone. Me not working hard. Yeah, right. Picture that with a Kodak. Matter of fact, go to Times Square, take a picture of me with a Kodak. We really let Pitbull get away with saying that. This is that same brown eyeshadow. I'm just using a different brush to like kind of, I don't know, do things. <laughs> Grab some, oh! Grab somebody sexy, tell them hey. I'm gonna do some eyeliner now. The temperature outside has changed about one degree the past couple of days. So my allergies are like, okay. Just one thing about that. Ah! We did this. I drew some little like extra eyelashes below for just like a little bit of like, you know, a mod moment, a mod moment. The eyeliner I use is the UZ Eye Opening Liner. This slaps. It's a brush tip liner. I think I've showed it before, but it's amazing and it's like 16 bucks and I love it. Oh God, those are not even at all. the little lower lash line hold the eyeliner kind of away from your face because you only want the actual like tip tip of the brush tip to be interfacing with your skin i just think it's very progressive of me to be out here breaking the stereotype of bisexual people as being like just constantly hooking up with people you know uh no some of us are just out here vibing <laughs> Some of us are just out here vibing, thriving, feeling sad, pining, uh, wanting, desiring, and crying. I'm still so proud of myself that I was able to find someone from Tinder and like just get all that situated at least once. Like I really am proud of myself for that, especially because it was before my breast reduction. My breast reduction got me so much confidence in my body and I didn't have that confidence yet when I, you know, met this person. So, Props to me in uh, July of 2018, good job, girl. Damn, I did not think you had it in you. One of the things I just find helpful about dating is like just the knowledge that it's the, above everything else, the thing you really should do at your own pace when you're ready to do things. I had a lot of insecurity as a teenager because I wasn't dating anybody. And looking back on who I was as a teenager and how I dealt with problems and whatnot, I was not emotionally ready for a relationship when I was a teenager in no way, shape or form. I was a kid, I was a child, I was not ready for anything and I didn't do anything and I think that was good. In college, I was probably ready. Probably. Uh, that's, that, that's things a little bit more. That guy from junior year, Julius. So 2011 was when Tumblr started getting really popular. I had already been on Tumblr for like a year, but now like <laughs> locals at my school were getting on Tumblr. Julius got a Tumblr and I was like, oh, this is perfect. I thought of the perfect in. So I went to London with my mom right at the end of junior year. I missed the last day of school because I went to London. And my idea was like, when I get back to America, I'm gonna message him. I'm gonna private message him on Tumblr. And I'm gonna be like, hey, I just realized we went the whole school year without giving each other our phone numbers. Maybe we should change that. Wink face. On the plane home, I was like vibrating. I was, I was so excited to like go home, whip open my laptop and like DM the shit, like slide all the way in those DMs. I get online, I open Facebook, he's dating someone. Literally the first thing I see top of my newsfeed is like Julius is in a relationship with some girl I know. I'm like, oh, okay, time to die. I was furious. I think I like made an angry Tumblr post about it. If I can find the angry Tumblr post, I'm gonna put a screenshot of it right here. <laughs> Just soak up this cringe mama. Do I have any crushes right now? Not really, not at all. I don't think I know enough people to have crushes now. I mean, I wanna change that. I'm like kind of coming to a bit of a watershed moment in regards to my own identity and my attitude towards my body and dating and whatnot, where I feel like I'm more capable now than I've ever felt. And like things seem brighter now than they've ever been. And I think it's honestly, truthfully, because my hair has grown back. <laughs> 
can do this hairstyle again, so I'm unstoppable. I'm gonna use the Ginger Binge side of my Fenty Beauty Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule Duo, which is a very nice shimmering blush for me and my skin tone. I'm not gonna use the highlighter in here because, <laughs> you'll see, baby. You in the hood now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we use a what of rad today, baby. Oh, there she is. There she go. The sparkles. Ice queen, baby. Oh, she's never had one emotion. Ah! Oh my god, I'm the most beautiful girl in the world. Oh. I feel like I went through kind of an LOL so random phase at the beginning of my channel where it's just like, oh yeah, oh, 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 I'm random and I have makeup. And now I'm just like, you know, more refined and sexy and mature. You know, it's just kind of like who I am and what I'm doing who I have chosen to become. This is so fun to use. I'm so glad I bought this. I'm going to use one of the Kaleidos Lucid Lips. This one is the shade Mesmerize. It's just like a standard nude mauve gloss. It's really hard for me to find glosses in this color that are sheer enough that they don't look super chalky on me, but still kind of give me that like mod moment, just like a good nude lip. This is like real nice. Why is putting on lip gloss with your mouth open the most erotic thing in the world? Solana Lux, Bri Rose, we love her, we know her, we love her. The girl who runs Solana Lux also runs the Etsy jewelry store where I got these earrings. I will link both Solana Lux and Nectar Jewelry Co, which is the name of her other brand. She's not paying me, she's just really nice. <laughs> and like, I love this face mist and I love these earrings, girl, so hey. Uh, you know what it is? It's almost my birthday. My birthday is March 16th, so I'm feeling like the universe is just like giving me vibes, you know? I'm about to be 26. More like 26. <laughs> Let's hope so. So this is the look, this is my face. Oh my God, I look great. What? Who are you? Should I get that good shoulder? Mm. I feel like I'm being imbued with the warm glow of Rihanna as we speak. Oh, Barbados. Thank you so much for watching this video, but before you leave, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would be very romantic. And if you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Nisi Pisa. I also have a second channel called Extra Nisi Pisa that I will link in the description where I post music and covers. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa for 10% off at sign up when you download Tinder. You can just download a fiance for free. So it's a pretty good deal. Bye. Oof. I am feeling it, Mr. Krabs. I gotta go listen to some ASMR or something. <laughs> Never mind, retract that, retract it, retract it. It's rescinded. <laughs>